you know, it's hard to keep up because there's so much contradictory information. Uh, there seems to be a lot of information being pushed by uh, media, uh, certain narratives that have been being pushed. Uh, but let's start uh, with just some of what President Biden uh, had to say uh, about an hour ago. Several of our allies have also announced they'll add forces and capabilities to ensure deterrence and defense along NATO's eastern flank. We will also continue to conduct military exercises with our allies and partners to enhance defensive readiness. And if Russia invades, we'll take further steps to reinforce our presence in NATO, reassure us for our allies, and deter further aggression. To be clear, if Russia decides to invade, that would also have consequences here at home. But the American people understand that defending democracy and liberty is never without cost. This is a cause that unites Republicans and Democrats. And I want to thank the leaders and members of Congress of both parties who forcefully spoken out in defense of our most basic, most bipartisan, most American principles. I will not pretend this will be painless. There could be impact on our energy prices. So we are taking active steps to alleviate the pressure on our own energy markets and offset raising prices. So uh, that was just some of what he said. Uh, it's kind of this tit for tat. Russia says they're removing uh, some of their troops from Ukraine's border. Biden said that we have not verified that. Frankly, it's hard to keep up, but I wanted your initial thoughts because the media has basically for a couple weeks now been telling us Russia is imminently invading Ukraine to the point now where CNN and others have descended all their reporters there. Uh, what's your initial thoughts on, uh, is it media hysteria? Uh, is Should we legitimately be concerned? Uh, what's your thoughts? Well, clearly the media doesn't really know what Vladimir Putin is going to do until Vlad Vladimir Putin does it. But it is true, indisputably, that there have been massive cyber attacks against Ukraine. Um, you know, the fact that the United States can be very imperialistic doesn't mean that Russia is not. And I think that sometimes we're all, I include myself in this, so skeptical about the military industrial complex that sometimes perhaps we sugarcoat a little bit the behavior of other people as well. This is not just an, Ameri an issue of America's response. This is an issue of NATO's response. This is an issue of Europe's response. This is the uh, an issue of an international response. There's an issue here beyond American militarism, and that does have to do with where you draw the line and what the rights uh, of the Russians are regarding Ukraine and what the response of the international community should be. I just hope we take a very internationalist perspective um, uh, on what occurs now. And um, listen, I've talked to enough people in Europe, particularly Scandinavian nations. They take it very, very seriously. Uh, the Im imperialist tendencies of Vladimir Putin, just as you and I take very seriously the imperialistic, not only tendencies, but behavior of the United States military as well. Right. You know, it's interesting because if you, you know, what I'm about to say gets you painted as like a, a, a defender of Russia. But the truth is, uh, when the Soviet Union collapsed uh, in the early 90s, I mean, there were promises made by the United States uh, and NATO that NATO would not uh, move <laughs> You know, further east into Russia, obviously uh, that has not happened. I mean, there there has been further encroachment towards Russia. Uh, so what what do you say? What is that balance between yes, Putin's not a nice guy. He's definitely a threat. He's definitely has imperial tendencies. But at the same time, I mean, does Russia have valid concerns that Ukraine will join NATO uh, uh, and basically the West is trying to further basically mm -hmm. encroach? It may be in Putin's mind, take, you know, take over. Well, certainly you have a point. I mean, if Russia was in Canada right now, or if Russia was in Mexico right now, we would certainly be yelling about that. So the point you're taking, you're making is very legitimate. It exists at the same time as the fact that Ukraine is an independent country. And both, un not unfortunately, but as is often true in life, certainly in politics, two truths that might seem uh, contradictory both exist at the same time and have to be held in juxtaposition. So when you ask me where is that line, the line has to emerge hopefully from a consensus of very wise people in leadership that is international, obviously not just the United States. And I'll just point out because the president kind of waxed poetic that, you know, the people are behind him and Democrats, Republicans agree. Uh, well, 
new poll uh, conducted by Concerned Veterans for America and YouGov, uh, 49% of the population does not favor U.S. going to war with Russia if it, ing if it invades Ukraine. Only 9% strongly favors U.S. military involvement to counter Russia, while 15% somewhat favor it. So it's kind of a basically almost 50% do not support it, and the rest is a bit of a mishmash. Uh, a little more than a quarter of respondents were not sure. And not surprisingly, the strongest opposition to uh, engagement, military engagement, comes from individuals with military ties. Among the veterans surveyed, 60% opposed a U.S. war with Russia. Uh, for members of military families, the figure was 52%. So it doesn't seem like there's, you know, mass mood in this country still kind of suffering or some people say recovering from a pandemic, massive wealth inequality, all the things we talk about. Uh, so, you know, your thoughts, there doesn't seem to be, you know, uh, an appetite well, for that. I, I'm the first person to point out, among many other people pointing out, that the president has increased the military budget. The exit uh, from Afghanistan was spectacularly awful, not even making an effort to prioritize uh, the escape of uh, humanitarian workers who are female in Afghanistan. He is endorsing an increase in the building of nuclear bombs. So I, I'm, I'm not like... Um, making some stand for Biden on the issue of military uh, military prowess. However, I did hear the president an hour ago. He said, we're not going to war against Russia. He's not, I mean, he. I, I think that we don't have to worry about the fact that the American people don't want there to be a war against Russia. Biden is not suggesting a war between the United States and Russia. And he was very emphatic about that. He's mm -hmm. talking about what, what should be done to hold a line. He was definitely talking about sanctions. Uh, and he, he was talking about an international approach. I didn't, um, listen, I'm the first person, Jordan, to yell and scream about increased military budgets, uh, increased nuclear budgets, and the fact, and look, the, the arms sales to uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, which mean that Saudi Arabia can continue its genocidal war against Yemen. I'm not defending the, uh, the president's general military posture, but on Russia, he's not suggesting a war. And I think that uh, we should remember that. I, th I thought his speech was, was sober. Thanks for watching and make sure to tune in to Status Quo's daily live stream Monday through Thursday at 5 o'clock Eastern Time and Fridays at 4 o'clock Eastern Time.